G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole, where on our first story, OP's girlfriend wants OP to take down their rainbow flag in order to appease their parents. Is it a good idea? Who knows? Listen on and you might find out. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, smack that like button, and enjoy today's stories. Let's go. Am I the asshole for not wanting to take down my rainbow flag? My girlfriend's parents are visiting us for the first time. I am bi and have a rainbow flag. It's cute and I love it, as it took a long time to come to terms with the fact that I liked men too, and even more time to be in a place where I could come out. She wants me to take it down while her parents visit. We have met a few times, but I haven't really talked about it and they have assumed that I am straight. She wants me to take it down so as to prevent avoidable conflict. She understands that her parents are in the wrong, but she just wants me to pull it down. It's just a flag, and it's not like it has any impact on my life. I am being stubborn here. It wouldn't really hurt me to take down the flag. I know I'm running the risk of ruining the evening by not taking it down. I feel I am being insecure here, and I should just pretend to be straight for one more night. She misses her parents, and I feel like I am being too stubborn about it. Now in the comments, not the asshole. And let me give you some advice. She is not the one. The one would never ask you to take down your flag, or to pretend to be someone that you are not, unless it was to keep you safe. Not even for one day. I'm not saying to break up with her, I'm not saying it's over, and I'm not saying that she's bad, but she's not the one. The one will be proud of who you are in front of everyone because she or he loves you for who you are. You'll meet them one day. Not the asshole. You can take the flag down if you want. If you don't want to have the conversation today, or if you decide that you don't want to have that conversation with her parents at all, but it should be your choice. Pretending to be straight isn't a small ask. It is a big one, and you have got to ask yourself how long she expects you to do that. Is she telling you that she just isn't ready for the fallout right now, or that she'd prefer just not to have to deal with your sexuality in perpetuity? Look, I'm bi, and I haven't bothered coming out to my partner's parents. It's not important to me, as I'm rather private, and they are slash were older, conservative, etc. I don't hide who I am, but it also doesn't tend to come up. But here's the thing, I made that choice. He never asked it of me, and I know he'd have my back if it came up. That's very different from being asked to closet yourself for someone else's comfort. You need to have a discussion with your girlfriend about this issue going forth. If you take the flag down, is that part of her expectation that you continue closeting yourself for her around her parents? For how long? Does she expect you to do this with other people too? And what happens if you don't want to? This issue is not really about this flag. Make your choice for today, but don't avoid the underlying discussion. And if your choice is to fly your flag, be proud. You don't have to closet yourself for anyone, and if she can't see why it's a crap thing that she's asking, that is a huge problem. And now on to the update. I took the advice given to me and held firm in not taking down the flag, but what happened was the closer her parents' visit got, the more stressed out that she got. I couldn't really watch her be this upset when I could do something about it. I took it down. I told her I did because I loved her, but we'll have to talk about this later. She seemed extremely relieved. The visit was okay, but she was still stressed out and zoned out for the dinner. She blamed it on work stress. I dropped the subject. I knew there was something there that she was not telling me, and I needed to give her time to process it herself. This week, she told me she had feelings for girls too, and that she had been caught making out with her girlfriend in high school. That year had been hell for her. She had been threatened with one of those camps, and she had to lie and throw herself back deep into the closet to survive high school. She cried a lot when she was telling me this. It must have been a very traumatizing experience. She also told me she feels incredibly ashamed of not coming out sooner, and yeah. Those people had done a number on her. She apologized for exposing me to them. 
We have a lot to talk about and discuss, but yeah. I'm feeling happy that she felt comfortable enough to come out to me. I feel she wanted to date someone in the Alphabet Mafia so that she knew that she would be supported when she wanted to come out. I love her. We have a lot to work through, and I'm not really interested in putting up with her parents ever again. They can F right off. She's planning on getting therapy. And now in the comments, I'm glad that it worked out the way it did between you and your girlfriend, and I'm with you. Her parents can just F right off, along with any other parents who'd even consider sending their kids to conversion camps. That is disgusting and vile, and those things need to be outlawed. Hopefully she'll consider going low or no contact with her parents, and this is a hill to die on. Good for the both of you on talking it through. I'm so angry about her parents, but love is winning today. And OP replies, I struggled with my parents. They disapproved of my lifestyle, but they still told me I was their son. They still loved me. They have come around now, and even that screwed me up. She had it much worse. I try to be chill, but this has my blood boiling. I really like how you handled this. Sometimes being kind is more important than being right. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for denying my seven-year-old food? My son is going to be seven in two days, and he weighs 95 pounds at four foot one. A year ago, he was 63 pounds. He's on medication that does cause you to be hungrier than usual. We just switched him a few days ago to a medication that hopefully doesn't do that, but so far, I have not seen any improvement. He typically has two breakfasts, snacks a lot throughout the day, and has at least two dinners. He's just always hungry, especially at bedtime. I stopped buying most junk food, but there is still stuff to eat. I am worried about his health as well as what kids will do and say to him as he gets older. I try my best to say no when he wants more food, and I know that he has eaten enough. I know he's hungry, but he must be eating at least 1800 calories a day. When I do give in, I try my best to give him healthier foods that he would eat, but that usually consists of fruits. Most times he wants a bagel with cream cheese or a hunk of salami. My wife does understand he has a weight problem, but wants to give him whatever he wants to keep him happy and full. She gets mad at me for judging him on his weight and thinks I'm embarrassed by it. She also gets mad at me for saying no to him. Am I the asshole for being concerned about his weight and saying no to him? OP has offered the following explanation as to why they think they might be the asshole. Denying a young kid food when they are hungry is an asshole move, but I want him to be healthy and not get made fun of for being overweight. Now in the comments, info, what does his doctor say? OP says, appointment next week. This was not an issue at his last checkup at six years old. Wait, so you talked to the doctor about switching his medication, but not about his weight and dietary habits related to that medication. Everyone sucks here for not speaking to a doctor about this 20 pounds ago. OP replies, We spoke about the weight gain. It's the reason we switched his meds. I haven't mentioned this before, but he's on meds for anxiety and impulsive behavior. He is on serious meds for that. I'd be looking into a new pediatrician. I have a fairly serious depressive and anxiety disorder and have been on medications for over 20 years. My doctor still requires office visits every three months to check how the medication is working. In my opinion, prescribing a child these types of medications without frequent office visits is irresponsible. By the way, my doctor was a pharmacist before she went to med school and still maintains both licenses. She is greatly respected in our community. So much so that a couple of these employees at my pharmacy have told me how good she is at her job and that I'm lucky to have her as my PCP. I only added this info because I feel that if a doctor pharmacist insists on seeing her adult patient every three months to check on a medication's efficacy, isn't it even more important to monitor a child? Most medications are not tested on people under 18, and virtually never on children under 13. Mental health drugs are usually trial and error with adults, and often take several tries to find the right ones. Children's bodies and brains change daily. It follows that they should be watched closely. OP, 
I hope it's clear that I'm not placing this on you or your wife. You're in uncharted territory and are placing your trust in a doctor. I'm just worried that he or she isn't being responsible enough with your child. I wish your family all the best. Not the asshole. There's a huge middle ground between bagels with cream cheese and hunks of salami and more balanced meals. Both of those things are calorie dense, but low in fiber and nutrients. Your wife isn't doing him favors by giving him what he wants either. She needs a visit with a nutrition specialist referred by the pediatrician. Childhood eating habits plus obesity pave the way for the rest of your metabolic life. And now on to the update. I wanted to share an update on the situation. I appreciate a lot of you taking the time to respond and give me some perspective. I first wanted to clarify a few things that came up a lot. The medication he is on was prescribed by a specialist, not his pediatrician. I also made a big mistake with his height. He was four foot one at last six year old physical. He is certainly taller, but I'm not sure how much. He is overweight, but not obese in my opinion. He doesn't have rolls or man boobs to give a better idea. Just thicker all around. He's an active kid and a picky eater. The first thing I did the next morning was apologize to my son. I told him I was wrong to say no to giving him food when he was hungry. I explained going forward that after meals, he can have a healthy snack when hungry and he must drink a full glass of water to get more if he was still hungry after the snack. We also agreed bagels and salami after meals will not be an option and he understood. But that night after dinner, he was hungry and asked for salami. I said we agreed not to do that and while he was upset at first, we came to an agreement of a glass of water and two pieces of celery with cream cheese. He drank and ate and asked for seconds which I gave him and that was it for the night. I also spoke with my wife and apologized for not being on the same page and saying no. I told her the plan and she was on board. I also called his pediatrician and we have a telecall tomorrow prior to his checkup to voice our concerns. While I didn't like some comments about my kid's behavior, I understand this is Reddit and accepted them with a grain of salt. My kid does have anger issues, but he's a great kid when things are good. I don't expect people to understand it from a Reddit post as opposed to being with him 24 seven for seven years. We are committed to finding him the best care regardless of cost. Thanks again. And edit. One thing I should have added that came up a lot is the misconception that he gained weight for a year and we did nothing about it. That isn't the full story and I should have explained better. Towards the end of 2020 school year, his pediatrician put him on meds for ADHD. We both thought that he had it. The meds actually made him lose a lot of weight to a point that he was skinny. He was worse behavior wise on the ADHD meds than off. We quickly realized this was not the correct diagnosis and we took him off. While we found new doctors to diagnose and prescribe, two to three months off everything, he got back to his normal weight plus a bit more due to being home and eating out of bedroom and not being as active as he would be if camp wasn't canceled due to COVID. Once he was diagnosed properly, he was put on meds that helped his behavior, but the side effect was him eating all the time. The weight gain was in three to four months and it was discussed with his doctors, but we continued with the meds that were helping. Two weeks ago, we brought up his weight and knew that we wanted to change the meds. He is fully on the new meds as of Sunday, phased out old, and we're seeing if there will be a change in eating habits. And now in the comments, I think your son is lucky to have you as a dad. And from what you write, I think you were lucky to have him as your son. And OP replies, thank you. Agreed. Whether or not you were an asshole in the original situation, the steps you took from the next day on were inspirational. Coming up with a solid plan, making it clear and transparent with your son, and holding yourself and him liable for sticking to the plan, and making sure to be on the same page as your wife and actually talking it out. Being a good parent isn't about never being an asshole and doing the right thing 24 seven. It's about being open and clear with your children when you realize that maybe you didn't do the right thing and discussing and setting fair and reasonable standards moving on. And OP says to that, Thank you for the kind words. 
This parenting thing is freaking hard. Great update. Just wanted to say, maybe not celery at bedtime, as it's a diuretic. Essentially makes you pee a lot. Veggies are a good choice. Carrot, peppers, and hummus? I hope you talked to your wife before you told your son what the plan was going forward, and not after, as your post suggests. And OP says, I guess I didn't do it in that order. My wife slept in, and son was up early. I just wanted to apologize as soon as I can. I was confident that me and my wife would be in agreement when I told her, and she was beyond happy with my change of direction, as well as on board. You are a good parent. I have the opposite as to where my son doesn't eat enough, and he is very small for his age, at 11. And his ADD medication makes him especially not want to eat, which we were warned about. My son gets irritated that I make him eat, but his pediatrician says he has to. It is tough parenting, huh? But so many rewards. Keep up the good work, and only you know your son and his needs. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for blocking in an Uber delivery driver? Pretty much, I live in San Francisco and on one of the busiest streets, also known as Fell Street in Hayes Valley, if anyone knows where that is. It has an uphill incline, and I was returning from work, which means it's rush hour and the street is crowded with cars. I live in a house that has a driveway, and when I pulled into park, to my surprise, there was a car in the driveway. I had to park my car in the middle of a lane while people honked at me and started walking up to the car in my driveway. I started talking to the guy and told him that he had to move out of the driveway. Because first of all, it's my driveway and street parking is impossible on this street. And second of all, it's my driveway. He pretty much said that he's waiting for a person to pick up their meal and didn't want to find street parking. He also told me he has a delivery like two streets over after and is going to leave his car here till he's done. At this point, I was bewildered by his attitude and how he literally wouldn't leave. So I decided to just park in front of the driveway entrance and leave my car there. Then he started screaming at me to move my car because I was blocking his car and I replied with, you're gonna have to wait until I do errands or leave for work tomorrow. He started to call the police on me for blocking my own driveway. I know it's an asshole move, but I think it's pretty justified. Now in the comments, not the asshole, but you're the asshole for not recording it. You have denied us the entertainment of watching some asshole fuming in your driveway because he was being a dick. Good on you though, screw that guy. That would have been a beauty to see. Hello, police? Yeah, there's this lady blocking me in in her driveway, and she won't leave because it's her driveway. I really wish I knew how they worded it to even convince the cops to show up at all. I used to be a teacher, and a parent once called the cops on me because her daughter wasn't eligible for a field trip based on her grades. They showed up and told her to leave. Not the asshole, But the dude knows where you live and park your car now. You might want to set up security cameras if you're able to, in case a brick comes flying through your window. And OP replies, We have a lot of cameras on the property, and he shouldn't even dare to attack the building, since it's considered historic. He would get in trouble with the city more than my landlord. I'd like to remind you of the existence of masks and hats. Your car is definitely going to get a baseball bat taken to it. It's SF, dude. It's totally city culture to get your car broken into or damaged, to be honest. <laughs> I love that you feel if your car gets damaged, it might be some random crackhead just as much as this Uber dude. And now back to the post. Edit one. I didn't think y'all wanted an update afterwards, but pretty much he called the cops on me. But this was around 5 to 6 p.m. ish, and it was a non-emergency call during traffic hour, so the guy was stuck in my driveway till like 8 p.m. The cops asked me to move my car, and I replied with only if he gets towed or a ticket, because he really had the audacity to pull this crap. So then the cops talked to him, and he ended up, I think, getting a ticket. And he was finally gone by 9pm. So yeah, he was stuck in my driveway for a good four hours. I hope he enjoyed the extra 900 bucks I pay for this spot. That is literally the reason I got so mad. The Bay Area prices are insane, and it's a large part of my check to park here. 
Edit 2, since some people are worried about the fine cost, it's about 128 bucks for the ticket. Yes, it's a lot of money. Could have been avoided if he would listen to me, and also he literally called the cops on himself. Also, as in edit 1, I pay a lot more for that parking space. I have dealt with drivers in the past, using my parking spot to drop off deliveries, and they are usually polite and understanding. This man was on something. It was really just his attitude and audacity. And edit 5, so I put the mortgage price amount and people started to find out my address, so I edited that out. But I will say that I'm in college, 20 male, and this is my first real world job. So my finances are a little bad, and so are my decision making skills. But yes, this will be my last edit to the post. Y'all have a nice weekend. And our next post is titled, Am I the asshole? I went to a dinner without my wife. So my, 28 male, mother, hosts these dinners where she usually wears traditional slash cultural clothes, cooks the traditional and cultural foods, etc. She wears traditional clothes because my dad loved seeing her dressed in them because he thought that she looked beautiful in those clothes. We can wear what we want. However, since the dinners are usually done in a traditional slash cultural setting, all the guests wear something culturally appropriate. My wife, 24 female, however, doesn't like wearing the culturally appropriate clothes and tells me that it's rude for my mum to host such dinners where people might feel uncomfortable. I told her it isn't even compulsory for anyone at the dinner to wear culturally appropriate clothes. Most guests wear it because they see it as a fun theme for a dinner. My mum is completely fine with guests wearing even a garbage bag to dinner. Not literally. <laughs> I told her to wear what she likes and come to the dinner. She said she also feels excluded when she's the only one to not be wearing culturally appropriate clothes. So I told her that's fine and she can stay at home and my mum wouldn't feel offended or anything. I would go there, meet my mum, have dinner and come back as soon as possible. She's mad at me now. Am I the asshole? Edit one, my family is Polish, we live in the US, but my mum likes to host these dinners as she misses her childhood home. My wife spent her childhood in Alaska, and she is not Polish. Edit 2, this dinner usually takes place on my dad's death anniversary as a way to remember him. My mum is usually very sad on this day, so I go to comfort her. Edit 3, after my father's death when I was 3 months old, my mum never remarried because she wasn't able to get past his death. He died in a truck accident. He was walking, and a drunk truck driver collided with him. Now in the comments, not the asshole. Your wife sounds like she's just hostile towards your culture, and she wants you to forget about the way that you were raised and your family's traditions. Your wife sucks, and she's the asshole. She knew about this all before she married you, and she's acting like this is a big problem now? I don't think so. She doesn't have to go, I guess, but she can't be mad if you do go. She is trying to isolate and manipulate you, which is not okay. And I just read your edits, and holy crap, no. This is a dinner that you have once a year on the anniversary of your dad's death, and she not only won't attend for your sake, but she doesn't want you to attend. Friend, I don't like your wife at all. This is a big red flag, and I'm betting this is not isolated behavior. I don't know how much you have invested in this marriage, but if your wife can't see the importance of an event like this to you and your family, I am advising you to run. This woman is bad news. Not the asshole. But what exactly is she mad for? That you're going without her, or that you're leaving her at home? If she doesn't want to dress up, that is up to her. She can still go and enjoy herself. I personally think that it's great that your mom found a way to remember your dad, and you're a good son for supporting her. Please don't ever stop doing this. Your wife needs to understand that this isn't about her, and if she's uncomfortable, she can make other plans. OP replies to that, She's mad at me because I'm supporting misogyny by following a culture that expects men and women to dress a certain way. However, it is not forced on anyone. My mom wears those clothes because my dad loved seeing her in them. Everyone else is free to wear what they like. How on earth? 
Misogyny? What? OP says, yeah, women are expected to wear different clothes than men are, culturally. And? I guess that's the misogynistic part of it. I'm as feminist as they come, and that's totally ridiculous. To disrespect your culture and your mum and your dad like that makes me so angry on your behalf. It makes me sad for your family. And now back to the post, we have an update. Thank you guys for the overwhelming response. I did not expect all the love showered on my mum. I spoke to my wife about what has happened. I showed her this post and she got emotional. She said that she was an only child and it was super overwhelming for her to meet my family. As I have previously mentioned, my family is like a huge clan. About my mum, she said that her relatives usually asked her to be more ladylike all the time and she has a bad experience with other people telling her to cook. When my mum sent her recipes, she felt like the cycle was repeating. I told her that her behaviour towards my mum was still very much unacceptable. However, we agreed to let her leave my mum's home for a while to get headspace whenever she felt overwhelmed. She promised to be cordial with my mum and to try to bond at least. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.